Hey guys, Iori from Beyond the Summit here at the International Four. We're still in the playoff group stage, and I'm here with Hayoka from Team Liquid. How are you doing, sir? Good. How about you? I'm doing very well. I'm at the International, man. Of course I'm doing well. How have you been enjoying the event so far? Good. It's a lot of, a lot of long days, a lot of interesting games, so that's good. Uh, the venue is super nice. There's yep. food, which I also like. Also, I don't have to leave, which is super cool. It's my uh, room is right above. Comes in handy when you can just go up and down the escalator to get back and forth. So not, not a lot of leaving the, uh, the hotel, which is sick. Yeah. So what are you here for? You work for Team Liquid. You're, what, what is your job title, role, and context of this event? Uh, well, there's, I'm playing two roles in this event. Because first off, I run Liquid Dota. And so I'm keeping track of our coverage. And I'm making sure that that's running. But a lot of that, I just kind of let the writers do. So it's not too bad. And then also, Valve asked me to be the camera guy for Hotbid, because he's here doing interviews. Uh -huh. And so I'm helping him find people and then do those interviews. And then we're putting them on the Valve YouTube. So we're doing that. So that's a little different from how you guys have normally done it. You're actually part of the Valve team this time instead of just here as Team Liquid. Correct. I'm technically Valve staff as uh, far as this event is concerned, which is sick because I have the Valve staff badge, yeah. which I'm going to treasure I'm, forever. I'm lowly press. So that's a step up. That's, that's awesome. So how many writers are you guys up to now for Team Liquid Dota? Um, for Dota, I'd say maybe somewhere between 20 and 30. I mean, oh, wow. the actual number is the actual number of people that we have on staff, as far as like writers, is probably closer to like 40. But at any given time, there's maybe 10, 15 people that are inactive. And then people kind of come and go as they get busy with their job or school. And we also just did a round of hiring. And so we've been trying to get more people on board. We have, like in the last you know, two weeks, we've had some more people try to contribute um, for the team profiles and stuff like that. Cool. We try to keep it as busy as possible just because what we end up doing is creating a community of writers that can like chat with each other and discuss ideas and stuff. So yeah. we try yeah. to keep it a little, a little big. Yeah, it helps to have people to kind of bounce ideas off of and get that kind of group brainstorm going. That's uh, pretty cool. So talk to us a little bit about breaking Liquid Dota apart from TeamLiquid.net, because for a while it was just one big master site, and you guys have been slowly kind of breaking it apart into subsets. How's that whole venture been going for you guys? It's been going pretty good. Um, I mean, the thing is, is TL is like this huge mess of information, and so when you visit the website, it has two sidebars, it has all these links on top, it has multiple games that you're trying to keep track of on a single like front page rotator. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult because it's just, it's just like information Too overload. Much information, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's because there's Liquipedia and then there's TLPD and there's all these different features. And so we decided that what we needed to do is split it off to make sites um, so we could focus on a single thing. Like, you know, we made the Hearthstone website originally because we decided that it didn't really fit in with the TL, the normal TL Pantheon. Right. And it would be a little bit nicer if we could just create a custom site for that. Mm -hmm. We discovered that it was much easier to browse because it's not super full of things. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's focused, it's concise, it's much more clear. Mm -hmm. And we get to do cool things like have custom icons that are made for the game. Oh, we get yeah. to have special okay. features like, you know, one of the things we have on Liquid Dota now is when you post, you get gold. And then with the gold, you can purchase items that show up like in your, your uh, avatar, basically. So you can kind of customize your experience, which is something we could never do if we had a shared site, mm -hmm. which is really nice. That's and cool. so. We're able to customize things to a level that um, makes it just, it's much more like a home for that game versus being like, the impression we used, people I used to get a lot from people was like, well, there's Dota on the website, but you go there and it's very clearly a StarCraft website that also has Dota, which is not at all the impression we want to give. Right. Uh, how has it been traffic-wise? I know LD is number one to say, I still type in teamliquid.net every time, and I'm not looking for StarCraft. Is it, has that been a struggle, or is everyone, is the traffic kind of where you would expect it? It's about, yeah, I mean, it's about where we expect it. It's been growing. It's been doing pretty good in terms of uh, getting, like, repeat visitors and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's not as big as TL, obviously. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have nearly as much history. There's not as much uh, traffic coming in for just for Dota, but it's doing pretty well. It's, yeah. it's a pretty promising start. Yeah, cool. And uh, you're... Uh, uh, Across your field of responsibilities, you're also the guy that's in charge of the premier streamers on Team Liquid. Talk to us about that. I'm sure there are some people out there going, oh, you're that, you're that jerk that didn't approve my stream. What, what's, what's the deal with that whole system? How do you guys decide who's featured and who isn't? Well, so the thing with the featured streamers is that it's, uh, it, we rate people basically on two levels. And one of them is popularity, and one of them is skill. And if you're really skilled but not that popular, you can get on it. And likewise, if you're super popular but not that skilled, because you know there's a handful of streamers that are not so much like skill, but they're like entertainers, or they do, they do like teaching or something. Um, they're just like good streams. Pyrian is one that comes to mind. Yes, Pyrian's like that. Um, I mean, there's 
there's, there's a handful of guys that do that for StarCraft, the guys that are like teachers and stuff. Yeah. And then, then, then that also counts. And also if you're like, you know, kind of skilled and kind of popular, popular, then that also counts. Okay. And so we look at stream numbers and we do sort of a value judgment based on like who they are in the community. So it's not just a raw, like you need 300 viewers or there's not some right. benchmark like that. It's more of a concerted effort. In terms of skill, there actually is a benchmark for StarCraft okay. in that we use WCS standings. So if you're in oh, WCS, okay. you get in. And then if you've been out, for, uh, out of WCS for like a season or two, just because I'm kind of lazy. Right. Um, we pull people off, so it's a little more fluid in that, in that way. Okay. For Dota, it's more like if you're on a relevant team, if you were like actively playing for one of the teams that is in like a qualifiers or is in the international, then that's automatic. And then, you know, otherwise if you're super, super popular. Cool. Awesome. Um, in terms of Team Liquid, I'm kind of curious. You guys did a TSL. You've done three TSLs, I think, for Star four TSLs for StarCraft. Jeez, I'm behind, I'm behind the times in StarCraft. Sorry. It's been a while since I've been in that scene. Um, but th they've been received really well. I remember TSL 3 was the one that I, in, when I was really active in StarCraft, and it was an amazing experience at the time. Have there been talks about doing something similar for Dota, as some sort of a Team Liquid Dota League? We talk about it every once in a while, but ultimately it's one of those things where that, that the marketplace is very, very crowded mm -hmm. just in terms of tournaments. And no, it, sure. we also don't feel like if we can't bring something unique, then it's very, very difficult for us because it's a lot of production time and it's a lot of effort. And also, since we've done TSLs, like back in those days, we did things because we knew that we could raise the level of production ourselves very easily because right. that was before a lot of companies were good at producing and had yeah. good overlays. Like if you remember, the TSL3 graphics were like blowing IEM out of the water at that yeah, point. Yeah, I remember that. You guys had like the, the portraits. It was, yeah. uh, I, I, I don't know what the right, illustrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was. The pencil drawings. Yeah, that was really cool. That was a really, that, I just remember that being a very unique standout feature at the time. Right. I see where you're coming from. And these days, that's very standard. Like pretty much everyone does that. So there's not as much for us to offer in terms of being better than other tournaments. You know, the, the production quality of everything has come, become so high that we need to be able to do something a little bit unique, a little bit different. And so it's not quite as attractive for us, but I do still want to do a little more in Dota in terms of like tournaments and events. And uh, you know, like, I want to bring back TL Attack, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember TL Attack. We, we, I can empathize. We had the same kind of thought process with the summit. We want to do tournaments, but we don't want to do just another group stage. Like, we wanted to have some sort of a different feel to it. So I can uh, totally empathize with that stuff. Um, I have to glance at my notes here because I couldn't memorize everything I wanted to talk to you about. You write figures so you can read. I know that's my big problem here. Oh yes, I remember. One of the last things I wanted to tackle. You're, you're kind of an OG in esports. When did you enter the esports? Sphere. I mean, I started writing for TL in 2008. Um, I started oh. working. Sorry, I, was, I, had a, I was thinking about my notes. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in a different plane right now. I started writing, working more seriously with it um, in terms of like organizing and uh, like editing and trying to be involved in site direction. Maybe like late 2009, early 2010, and then I've worked at it full time since uh, early 2000, early or mid 2011. Cool. So it's been you know, maybe between like four and six years, depending on how you look at it. Yeah. So I can remember when StarCraft II was really on the rise a couple years ago, and there was the, the talk of the, the infamous eSports bubble. When is the bubble going to burst and all of our dreams are going to be shattered? Um, the numbers we're seeing in Dota now are blowing anything out of the, everything out of the water from that time. You know, at that time, it's like 20 concurrent viewers. It's like, oh my god, guys, we're, we're going to be rich after this. You know, now there's 200,000 people watching Dota on Twitch right now. Do you think there, do, is the bubble real? Is Dota in a bubble right now? What do you, where do you see the future of Dota going in the, the kind of perspective of esports? So in terms of like, people look at these things as like a bubble. I don't think it's so much a bubble as it is. It's like a, you know, something that goes up. And then there's these periods where it plateaus and these periods where it sinks a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then things pick up again and then it goes back up and it, it reaches a new level every time. And that's how it, what it's been doing since 2002 or you know, 1999, yeah. whatever you want to say. And I think that's just kind of what's happening. You know, like StarCraft was really big for a while and then it sort of sort of waned off and then some things took its place. And now like Dota is really big and CSGO is actually pretty big now. Yeah. So there's, the there's all these other things that, that come in and even stuff like um, like speedruns are actually pretty relevant and it's related enough to the esports sphere that I think that that's, you can consider that a related you can't cross industry. Them all. Yeah. Right. And so I don't think it's so much a, like a situation where there's a bubble and then everything explodes and it's just gone, like you know what happened with CGS maybe. Because mm -hmm. I think that there's always going to be a market of people who are interested in playing games, who are interested in competing, and who are interested in watching just because, I mean, I think we've, we can demonstrate that there's a lot of people that are interested in watching. Yeah. And so I think that, that group only grows as we, especially like as our age category gets older, yeah. just because like, you know, every, the hard part is getting people to do, watch it the first time. Because mm -hmm. when you hear about it, you think like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever thought of. There's no way I'm ever going to watch this. Right. But once people start watching it, they get really sucked in. Mm -hmm. And that group of people only gets bigger. And also as, as stuff like Twitch becomes more prevalent, mm -hmm. like I know tons of people that barely even play games that love watching Twitch streams. They love watching like Let's Plays and stuff. 
Yeah. And I think that, that I think that only gets more, uh, you know, that only spreads even more to the community, yeah. like to the general populace. Yeah, we, we need more people like that. I mean, more players is great, but we need just more spectators. If you think about traditional sports, you know, football, there's so many people watch the NFL, but how many of them actually play football on a daily basis? Not really that many of them. So I, I see where you're coming from. And I, I think I would tend to agree. The, the bubble is a little grandiose, if you will. But, I mean, um, it's... It, to some extent, it's true, but it's it's way too black and white for what the actual situation is. The graph kind of just goes up yeah. and keeps down, but it, like you said, you're constantly push, pushing the envelope, yeah. so it's uh, kind of a, a different a different thing. So very cool. Um, where can people find you? Twitter, Facebook, anything you want to share with us here? I am real Hayoka on Twitter. Okay. Um, there's a lot of Hayokas on Twitter. I was looking for it earlier, and there's there's quite a few of them out there. You no, know, the, the there's one Hayoka, and it's a dude who lives in South Carolina. That's like a graphic designer or something. And he uses his Twitter just long, just enough that I can't like petition Twitter to like let me have that name or whatever. So there's that, and then also um, liquiddota.com. Yep. I run that website. All right. Well, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Good luck to you with your hotbed interviews, and uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that we'll see plenty more of them throughout the event. I'll do my best. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll be back with more interviews here at the International Four.